the almond is not looking very good. The good news is the bugs are gone. The bad news is so are all of the leaves. Over the past few months, we've been putting a lot of time and energy into starting our homestead in the mountains. We've planted new fruit trees and vines, and we've pruned some of the existing olive and carob trees as well. And we've been preparing the ground, ready to plant our first garden beds. In today's video, we're sharing a garden update and showing you all the progress that we've been making to start growing our own food. The start of spring brought with it a new flurry of life that we've just never seen on this plot of land before. Our fruit and nut trees were in full bloom and their little green buds burst into hundreds of new leaves. It's been really rewarding to see these trees take so well in their new environment and watch them grow bigger and stronger with each visit that we take to the land. The peach, nectarine, almond, plum and cherry have all had sweet little flowers that have come and gone. And the fig, pomegranate, kiwis and grapes seem to grow more and more pretty shaped leaves by the day. and we just can't wait to harvest fruit from them in the years to come. So we've got all six bales down here now. Um, so they're gonna go over the plant beds basically end to end. And then we've got some compost as well to go into where we're gonna put the plug plants. So the plan is to soak these again, cause it's been a bit too long since we last did it. And then we'll put the hay bales on top and soak those in. And then we'll come back in a day or two and we'll place um, holes where we're gonna put the plug plants. And then inside those holes we'll put some compost and then um, a hole in the cardboard and then hopefully they should be nice and protected in a nice humid environment. On the road I've been away for far too long but now I'm on my way back home I hear the west winds calling I'm a name They're telling me to head your way Down your road and past your gates Keep your eyes on the horizon I was looking to belong when I'd already found my For the setting sun For you to fall into my arms The place I call my home I was looking 
So there we have six bales of straw end to end on top of soaked cardboard and then we've soaked the straw bales. So we soaked one side and then flipped it and then soaked the other side so they should be nice and saturated. And then tomorrow hopefully we'll get some plants in. With the wind always being a problem here we're thinking to fold these bushes down um, as a bit of a windbreak and stake them in. Um, so we'll see how that goes and we've also got some yucca that we might end up sticking there as well just so there's a bit more vegetation for the wind coming up the hill and so we don't lose all the straw for any real hedge layers out there we're sorry for bastardizing your craft and yes that is a floating rock <laughs> worst hedge ever i got a, a package delivered and i got some worms so I'd like to have a worm farm down here in the garage. We have compost up on the land, but I have to travel up there to do it and it's you know, less in control. Whereas apparently if you have a little worm farm, it's more nutritious um, than compost and it's quicker. So I thought I'd have a go. So I was looking at making uh, one of those towers that you stack the buckets. I can't seem to find buckets with lids. So I've gone for one of these bins. Uh, it's a 60 litre bin. And apparently they only live in like the, the top layer of whatever is in there. So actually having a, a larger surface area is better and then I shouldn't need to stack quite so much. I bought some coconut husk that I need to hydrate and that forms a bit of roughage and we've got some cardboard. And then apparently something around this size can take up to a half kilo of food scraps a day, which is I guess more or less what we're putting in. Okay, so the coconut husk is literally a solid block of coconut husk. I think I'm just going to saw a piece off because otherwise that's going to be a lot of material. I've got some water here to hydrate it. Um, I had read that you need to leave some overnight um, to dechlorinate. I don't know if that's an issue we have in Europe or if it's just an American thing. I did it anyway. Um, I thought it's not going to hurt it. So I'm going to leave these in here to soak and get bigger. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to do a measured amount, but it looks like it's enough and enough. And I suppose I'll just wring it out if it's too wet. So yeah, I'll, I'll be back once that's hydrated. So we've left this about an hour and a half. Um, there were still some biggish chunks, but it, mostly it's broken down now quite nicely. And I'm just breaking these last little bits up that's still a bit dry. But they say that you should have a moisture content where you get one or two drops when you squeeze it. Um, so we've put some cardboard in the bottom of here and we'll get that. And then I'll put everything together, put the worms in and put some vegetables on top. So these are the worms I got, um, they're, I think they transfer as red wrigglers for, for, for most of us, but obviously yeah, we're in Spain, so that's what they're called here. Um, and they've come in a little takeaway box, so let's have a look what they look like. 
Yeah, they're in there and they're moving, which is good. I know they don't particularly like to be touched, but so it says 200 worms, but I guess that's by weight. There we go. There we go. There they all are together. Casualty. Um, the grape, although it's growing really, really well, loads and loads of new leaves, unfortunately, part of it has caught on to the new structure, which is what it was intended for, but because there's been a lot of wind, it's just snapped it. Um, so, never mind. But the rest of it's doing really well. We've arrived up at the land to a little bit of a disaster with the fruit trees, unfortunately. Um, so we've come here to give everything a bit of a water and we've found little bugs, little kind of beetle things, just everywhere. Absolutely covering the fruit trees on the peach, the nectarine, on the almond, the grapes, the kiwis, they're just covered. The things that are a bit more hardy, they're not on, so on the pomegranate or the figs or the olives, but everything else is just infested with these little bugs. So you can see here on the almond, this is the worst hit one, um, and there are just hundreds of them. The leaves are covered, and they're, they're kind of eating all the leaves. I don't know if you can see that. So they're just eating all of the new fresh green leaves. So we're going to try spraying them with some washing up liquid first and just see whether that will get rid of them. Um, we don't want to use chemicals, we don't want to use anything that will harm the trees or the environment or anything. So we're going to try this first and see whether that can just clear them off. Um, but I don't know if you can see, they fly. So hopefully this is just going to kind of get rid of them. Even though they're not on the figs or pomegranate, we're still going to give them a spray and hopefully it means that they won't get them. Um, maybe they're not attracted to those leaves, we don't know, but better safe than sorry, I suppose. We're back up at the land um, after one day away because they were doing some maintenance on our track. Um, so we weren't able to come up yesterday. We've come back up today to come and have a look at the trees. And unfortunately, the almond is not looking very good. The good news is the bugs are gone. The bad news is so are all of the leaves. I mean, just look at it. They came, they saw, they conquered. 
there's just one little bug left. There was hundreds on this thing and that's the only one that's left. But it's because there's no more leaves for them to eat. But it may have just coincided with some heavy winds. Uh, the last two days have been really, really windy and the leaves are all over the ground. So a lot of these have blown off, uh, possibly because they were already damaged and nibbled and then uh, because they were damaged, they've fallen off. Or maybe they've also blown off in the heavy wind. We're not sure. But yeah, this almond is not looking very healthy. Um, <laughs> so I guess we'll just see what we can do to help it recover. Anyone got any ideas? Luckily, everything else is looking okay. Um, this one doesn't seem to have any uh, bugs left on it. We're going to spray it again anyway, just in case. But we were told that this little bug is not really that harmful. Um, and usually the birds eat it before it has a chance to do much harm. Um, which luckily seems to be the case on most of the other trees. There are a few nibbled leaves. Um, but this one's still really full of foliage and hopefully it's going to be okay. But maybe the almond was just the tastiest, who knows? This peach is looking a little bit nibbled in a few places, but luckily not too bad. The plum also seems to have fared pretty well and hasn't lost too many leaves. And luckily the grapes seem to be doing okay too. And there doesn't seem to be any more of those bugs around here. Unfortunately, we're not going to be ending this video with lovely garden beds that are full of plants and flowers. We had to put a little bit of a hold on that project until we have time to be able to go and buy the plug plants and get them planted. The reason we haven't had time is because we've been focusing on a couple of other things that are also really important. One of them being getting everything ready to put in the request for the permissions to do our kitchen and also dealing with a very temperamental water heater that keeps shorting the circuits and cutting out our electricity. So if you want to see us plant that garden, it's going to be in the next video. And as always, if you manage to get all the way to the end, then thank you so much for watching our videos and we'll see you on the next one.